after a good night's sleep, the next morning I headed back to Elephant Hills Trailhead. But this time, instead of going to Druid Arch, marked by the red line, I would hike two and a half miles on a four-wheel drive road to the Devil's Kitchen, marked by the blue line. From there, I would take a trail back to Elephant Hills Trailhead. That's my car, and this is just some of the scenery on the road to the trailhead. This is where the trail starts up that four-wheel drive road. Hiking this four-wheel drive road looks like it would be a lot easier than driving it. There you can see the dirt road down below. There's a jeep that just passed me by, heading the other way. You pull in here and then back down. Are you kidding me? You're supposed to back down this. Are you crazy? Now I know hiking would be a lot easier. Scenery hiking on the four-wheel drive road to Devil's Kitchen. Looks like a fork in the road. I can either go this way. Or this way. I think I better go that way. Looks like I picked the right way to go. Take a look at all this otherworldly scenery. Here's the trail. Take a look at the size of this rock wall I've been walking along. Except they have a restroom here in the Hell's Kitchen. I might as well take advantage of it. Woo wee! What a stench! Well, that sure the hell didn't help out. Oh my god, I can't stand it. The smell is unbearable. I gotta get out of here. What the hell's wrong with the store? Oh, phew! Open up, damn it! Oh my god, there's stench! My eyes are burning! Wait a second. If this is the devil's kitchen, could this be the devil's bathroom? The bathroom from hell? No! There's the trail. I need to get directions. I'll check out that sign that's up ahead. Let's see, I need to get to Chesler Park, but this sign shows it in two different directions. That way is a very nice way. Plus down that way too. Of course, people do go both ways. Well, when in doubt, flip a coin or take the shortest route, I always say. Back on the trail and some more of that out of this world scenery. There are some hikers in front of me. I'll pull back and this will give you an idea of just how big these rock formations are. Snow-capped mountains in the distance, but still fairly hot here. The park got its name from giant needle formations like this. I tell you, is this great or what? You know what? I could be here or I could be at work right now. whose prisoners you are, and from which there is no escape. There's a cairn, and I'm back on the trail. I know this is going to sound repetitive, but here's some more of this out of this world scenery on the trail. cairn or pile of rocks pointing the way. Looks like this is the way I'm going. Here's a shot of a hiker that crossed my path. Both of us wondering what's around the next corner.
I had to get down on my hands and knees to get through this part of the trail. people on the trail, hiking on the slick rock. Here they are again. Looks like the trail is leading them to those dome formations in the distance. Some more people hiking in front of me. Notice a pattern here? Everyone is passing me up and in front of me. The only person I was able to hike faster than was an old lady with a walker. Still more people in front of me, but that's okay. I recognize the formation from yesterday, and I think I'm pretty close to the trailhead. Sure enough, there's the parking lot, and that's my car, the small one on the left. After that, I headed back to my campsite at the Needles Outpost. I fixed me some dinner and went to sleep. It had been another long day and I had a lot of driving to do the next day. Needless to say, that night I slept like a log, except for being woken up one time in the middle of the night by some strange noises. Nah, it couldn't be. Probably just a freeze-dried food-induced dream. The next day I was up early and cruising down the highway. Here's a scenic view on the road as I'm getting closer to Monument Valley. I ended up bypassing it because I wanted to get to my next destination, almost 400 miles away, as soon as possible. My next destination is found on old Route 66 and is the little town of Seligman, Arizona. I mean, how could I bypass a town that builds itself as the birthplace of historic Route 66? It seemed that everywhere you turned in this crazy town, there was something to remind you that you were on Route 66. From the motel signs, to wind whipped flags, murals painted on the wall, signs on the stores, everything pointed to Route 66. I wanted to do some souvenir hunting, but first things first, I was hungry. So I headed over to the local diner called the Roadkill Cafe. With a name like that, I had to check it out. Just look for the large sign. You can't miss it. But in case you do, look for the large storage tank next to the cafe. According to the sign, it holds 10,000 gallons or 1,280,000 shots of Seligman moonshine. I think I'm starting to like this place. Once inside, check out the ceiling of the bar area. It's papered with $1 bills. I thought I'd find a way to get a cheap lunch, but unfortunately, the ceiling was higher than I could reach. Now let's check out the menu. Let's see. Sidewall surprise, caddy girl patty, ground round of hound, or maybe thumper hit the bumper, bad break steak, or the chicken that almost crossed the road. I went with my gut feelings, no pun intended, and decided to go with a bird that smacked the curb. To my surprise, the bird that smacked the curb looks and tastes amazingly like a Reuben sandwich, and a good one at that. After a meal like that, I had to use the restroom. Despite the skunk on the sign, the bathroom was clean and odor free. Well, at least it wasn't until I got through with it. <coughs> Next, it was time to go out and check out some of these unique little souvenir stores. You Inside the stores, you were guaranteed a wide variety of things to look at and buy. Most of it, naturally, having to do with Route 66. Here's an interesting sign in this building. I didn't know they had an airport here. Holy cow! Now that's what I call door-to-door -door service. Luckily, for me and the town, we're on hand to take care of things. Here's another interesting storefront. I have no idea what those mannequins are doing there on top of the roof. Well, at least I think they're mannequins. And just in case you are wondering just how far away Seligman, Arizona is, well, that's just about it for Seligman and my video. After that, it was just a short hour drive to the town of Kingman, Arizona, where I stayed the night. The next day, 
It was about a five hour drive from Kingman to home. It had been a long trip, but it had been worth every minute of it. 